Brent Johnson from NJ Advanced Media, the Star Ledger, and NJ.com. We are here at the Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. We're here for a New Jersey Governor's Candidate Forum with the uh, third party and independent candidates running for governor. On November 7th, there is a race to succeed Governor Chris Christie, who is leaving office. And everyone knows there's a Republican and a Democratic candidate. Um, but there are also five third party and independent candidates in the race. And polls show that not everybody seems to be happy with the Republican or Democratic candidate. So we wanted to give the other candidates a voice. And I'm here with a Libertarian nominee, uh, Peter Worman. So Peter, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for governor. Uh, first off, let me tell everyone here, it is absolutely an incredible honor to be representing the Libertarian Party as their nominee for governor. There were plenty of candidates that stepped into the race. We had a bunch of candidates who dropped out as well. And I was the one that came in as the person who was kind of recruited into the position. You asked me why you're running for governor? I was recruited into this position because we had some great name candidates that were gonna run for us, big high profile candidates. They backed out. And when you're asked by party elders to do something, they said, Pete, we need you to run. So I went into this convention, ran for it, picked it up, and the campaign's been picking up steam ever since. So a little bit more about myself. Um, I've spent a lifetime, my entire life, to, uh, adult lifetime has been spent uh, in service to everyone. Between my service as a United States Marine Corps rifleman, I spent time as a, a uh, volunteer firefighter, I spent 20 years as a volunteer athletic coach in New Jersey, and uh, on top of that too, I was also spent a lot of time working with the youth of Newark doing outreach educational programs. So my entire life is all about service. Running for governor is just the next step in my life to provide service for my fellow man. I believe I'm here for a purpose, that is to serve you, not myself. So that is why I'm running. So what do you think is the biggest issue facing New Jersey and what is your solution to fix it? It's, it's a good question to ask. It depends on who you ask, but for the majority of people out there, the biggest issue is taxation. Yes, running as a libertarian, my platform is typical libertarian style, everything's freedom oriented. But the focal point of my campaign is my tax plan. My tax plan, I'm the author of what's called fiscal democracy, all right? Fiscal democracy, how this works. Now, between all the different places where you pay taxes in New Jersey, between your sales tax, gas tax, your income tax, even your vehicle registration fees, all of that, that amounts to about 30% of your income. Under my plan, called fiscal democracy, what we do is we introduce a constitutional amendment, we cap that at 10% with the added bonus of you get to decide what to do with that money through your weekly paycheck deductions. There's no more property tax, no more gas tax, no more sales tax. The only thing we have is an income tax at 10%. You get to decide what to fund and what to defund. If you like your local school district, you can put some money into that. If you like your local park system, you put some money into that. If you want to take some money out of the, uh, the state arts endowment program and defund that, you're welcome to do that. This takes out a lot of hostility and animosity that people have towards their government. Right? Most of us are forced between your Democrats, Republicans, they all want to take, well, take away one of your liberties and give themselves their own liberties. Under my plan, what we're doing is we're moving appropriations into your hands. You get to decide where the, where the money goes. Right now, okay, the biggest power that government has is monopoly of force, okay? The government is the only entity that can put a gun in your face and say, hey, do something, right? They're the ones that can legally do it. Their second biggest power is appropriations. They come up with budgets and they, they force you to pay whatever it is. Under my plan, fiscal democracy, we move appropriations away from irresponsible legislators and we put it into your hands. You get to decide what programs are important. If you like your county park system, you can fund it. If there's anything you don't like, you can defund it. Here's another good example too. This creates competition for your tax dollars. Okay, we see competition enriches our lives everywhere, in the economics, in production, in athletics. There's no competition for your tax dollars. Under my plan, the municipal government, the, uh, the state government, and the county government are all fighting for those dollars. They have to give you a better service or you can defund them. This puts power in your hands. This is what the framers of the Constitution intended to have, to have whereas power was in the hands of the people. That's my tax plan. I think that's where everybody's really focused on it, is, was that. Other than that, my, uh, we're worried about other things like victimless crime, we're worried about age of, um, age of majority, uh, we're talking about guns, drugs, anything you want to talk about. But the focal point of my campaign right now is on the tax plan, and it is to empower everybody to run a government the way you see fit. 
are, are there other issues, anything else on your platform that, that, that's important to you? Yes. Um, the war on drugs. This is a big problem. There's a growing international police union right now. It's called LEAP. I think it's a law enforcement against prohibition or something like that. Um, this war on drugs is harming 100 times more people than it is helping. If you th consider the fact, if you have an addiction to like heroin, marijuana, whatever it is, is this a medical problem or are you criminal? Right? Think about that. Do you belong in jail if you have an addiction problem? No, you don't. Okay, the number one demographic of people that are harmed by the war on drugs are the people that are incarcerated for it, and the number two demographic of people that are injured by it, believe it or not, police officers. And this is where a lot of divide comes in our environment right now, because police officers are forced to fight a war. They can't possibly win. The war on drugs started in the 30s, and it's getting worse and worse and worse every year. Imagine if you're a police officer, you pull somebody over the side of the road, and that person has a small usable amount of like, heroin, marijuana, whatever it is in their pocket. 10% of those people that are roadside will use violence to get away from the situation because they're either A, going to get locked up for five years, or B, the police are going to force them to roll over on a very violent drug, upstream drug dealer. There's no option there. So some of them, 10% will use violence against a police officer. Now, this is what's caused an escalation on both sides. Police officers, citizenry, and it's getting out of control. We're asking our police officers to be combatants, and that's wrong, okay? Matt and I, we were in the Marine Corps. We know what combatants are. Police officers are not supposed to be combatants. They're supposed to help us. They're supposed to come to us when something is wrong is going on. We can't be forcing all of our police officers into suffering from PTSD. You put a police officer on the job for three years or so, and he's doing roadside stops. He doesn't know if he's going to get shot. He's going to meet the love of his life on a roadside stop. After three years, you're suffering from PTSD. Every one of them are. Police officers are the number two demographic. Of course, people incarcerated for it, yes, but also people that are enforcing the laws are wrong here. Well, I'm sorry, not wrong. People that are being enforcing the laws, they're, they're being forced to do something that is wrong, okay? Yes, I agree. Don't do drugs. Drugs are the worst thing in the world to do, but they are much worse being illegal than legal. Any questions? So, <laughs> so um, everyone knows that the number one thing to ask an independent is uh, Republican and Democrats have can have their grip on the system. How do you expect to, to, to gain attention? And what separates you from the two running in this race? Okay. I look at Democrats and Republicans as um, <laughs> two sides of a coin. They really are. They're parties of control. They really are. One wants to remove one of your liberties and install their own and they fight back and forth. The Libertarian Party is very consistent. We're for all freedoms, okay? If you want, you want your marijuana plants, you want to uh, have possession of different firearms, whatever it is, whatever your freedom that you want to have, that's where we are. We are consistently for individual freedom, even if that freedom is bad for you. Also, yes, I'm planning a big October surprise that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, it's so big it might not even fit in October, but in the off chance I lose this election. You can chuckle there. Um, and you have a chance I lose this election. My job is to raise awareness of the Libertarian Party, to raise the number of registered voters that we have, and get people more wary of their government. People, do not trust your government. Do not look to them to solve problems. Your government is not your friend. It's not. It works against you every chance it gets. Be wary of your government. Vote Libertarian. Thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you for watching NJ.com. Election day is November 7th. Uh, please stay tuned. Thank you.